going to plant agaves in the burn area. And you can tell it's, it's quite green now in the burn area. It's August 20th. And all these people are here to help plant agaves in the burn area after the monument fire. Do you guys want to go see what the long-nosed bat looks like? He's the guy who pollinates the flowers of the agaves. Let's go this way. look like they're wearing a skirt. This guy's wearing pants. Cool. Um, see those feet? Those little toes? They're set to attach. So I just hang on the rock. How do you find the little cracks and crevices? And then see that little thing right there on the end of the wing? What do you think that is? A little sweater. Nose. Nope. That's his thumb. Oh. <laughs> That's his thumb right here. Because our hand, their wings yeah. so if you look are at this, made up of their fingers. So this is his wing. That's just his hands. See his fingers? I see. So that's that the thumb. is so delicate. Yeah. And do they do they hang on to the when they fly in? Do they hang on with their wings then and their thumbs? Use their thumbs? Uh -huh. Like when they defecate? Uh -huh. Yeah. Defecate hanging upside down, which would be a it would, it would be good. Yeah. yeah. Switch and hang by their thumbs. Okay. Okay. They, they can climb by their thumbs, scurry around. Um, some species, in fact, the. Uh, the uh, common vampire bat actually is capable of running at, you know, 10 kilometers an hour. Everybody from all over, Sierra Vista, Tucson, points east, west, Pachuca, Pachuca, great. Um, this is a really important project, uh, you know, with the, the bats and everything, and the first why we just plant, we plant this. As you know, the fire did do some damage and devastation uh, to Mugabe over here, and so this is really critical. I'm really glad that was able to be put together by the staff of the park and all the cooperating agencies, the cooperating with Border Patrol, and everybody else to make this happen. Um, and I think that uh, we have a way to go for the in your park. I just want to thank you everybody for being here. Um, and you just be sick out every day and drink lots of water. <laughs> and uh, have a great day. Uh, my office is up here. I'm, I'll be gone most of the day, but uh, anybody who lives in the area, feel free to stop in the park anytime. See me if you've got questions. Uh, we love volunteers in the park. Uh, with the park system and with the Fish and Wildlife, we really depend on volunteers to help get through. So, thank you. It's, it's the same procedure. Give it a little squeeze, pull it out. This one's a little older, so it's got some roots kind of grown in a circle. So, if you want to kind of break up that just a little bit try and keep it in a ball if it kind of crumbles and falls apart don't worry they're tough plants they've been watered they can handle it so here you can see it doesn't really need to be a very big hole and please wear gloves I'm not wearing gloves right now but this is the one exception make like a little bit of a depression be careful not to poke your hands and then give it a little Try not to crush the leaf like I just did, but no air pockets. These nursery grown plants in the first year, they're going to smell a little different than anything out here. Deer and javelina might attack it. We, with the help of the Girl Scouts and several other people, constructed 1,500 of these protective cages. <coughs> so expand the cage, deploy the cage. And some of this ground's kind of rocky, so this might get real tricky. Use the landscape stakes if possible. Find some rocks. And secure it as best I can. So there's some big rocks over here. Now come on over here, let's look at some bat stocks and bat biology. As, as Dean said, I'm Dr. Joel Diamond with the Arizona Game and Fish. We have a myriad of projects with lesser long nosed bass, including projects here in the park. I want to give you a little primer on bat biology before we go out and start creating bat habitat. It's about 4,000 mammals on the planet, 4,000 different mammal species on the planet. What percentage of those do you think are bats? Seven. Seven? Any other guesses? Twelve. Twenty-five percent of all mammals are bat species. Here in the U.S., how many species do you think we have? Hundred. Cut that in half. 50. <laughs> 43 bat species in the U.S. Uh, 
How many of you think of those bass pieces occur in Arizona? Oh, 20. 28, so pretty close. We have, <laughs> we have the second highest diversity of bat species in the U.S. right behind Texas, because Texas is lucky enough to get cool bats blown in from the Caribbean. Um, here in, here in, uh, in Arizona, we have three bats that are nectivore species. Nectivore species means they'll feed, they feed on the fruit, the pulp, the nectar, the pollen of plants. Primarily columnar cacti, so Oregon pipe cactus, Sunita cactus. Um, anybody think of any other columnar cacti around? Saguaros. Okay, saguaros. Saguaros are generally an early spring food. Later in the year, they come and feed on agave. They start out when lesser long-nosed bats come into the state. They start out at a lower elevation, so at a lower elevation over an organ pipe. Generally, they'll feed on the blossoms there early on in May and June. Then in in uh, June, July through October, they'll move up in elevation, following the agave bloom. So they move up in elevation, following the agave bloom. So later, latest in the season, you'll find them at the highest elevation. They've been found as high as about 7,000 feet, 7,700 feet. Lesser long-nosed bats are critically endangered. They, they occur in the, in the U.S. basically from June through 1st October. They migrate from southern Mexico, so they have a long trip up here. Once they get up here, if they get up here, there's a big fire like this. It leads all their food. What's going to happen to them? They're not going to be able to gas up for the trip back home. So it, it's imperative that we... That we that we create a food source here, try to supplement the foods that have been lost. This is a big fire here. We don't intend, it, it's, it doesn't spread all the way across the valley. We don't intend it's going to negatively affect this bat population in the long term because these bats are built to travel. We, we do a lot of radio telemetry. Last week we tracked the bat that 50 kilometers out to feed, 50 kilometers back. So a daily commute is not a big deal for these guys. So this will supplement the population that lives here. It will also supplement the populations that come through here to feed. border fence. See it. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit and you can see it more. On the other side of that fence is Mexico. Tell me about your agave, Summer. Well, for one thing, we have like a triple agave. There's one down there that's growing. Uh -huh. And then there's another one right there. Wow. So he's a big one. Three siblings. And he has thorns, unlike the other ones that we have. Yeah, he's a little older, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Alan, he's got a triple agave. There's one that's growing right there. And one that's growing right there. And then one big one. 
Okay. Well, you, you take it up there. Can your mama say I buy the truck? They'll help you fill it up. Okay.